Hi, I'm Jeff Dobson. I'm a senior application engineer here at OnSkill, and I've recently completed an engineering doctorate at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow, which was sponsored by OnSkill. The primary research of my doctorate was to look at using OnSkill to simulate ultrasonic non-destructive testing inspections of carbon fiber uh, composite components. So I looked at creating accurate and efficient FE models um, of these inspection scenarios so you could use them to both evaluate and optimize your inspections. Non-destructive testing, you're essentially trying to look for defects or flaws in um, high integrity components. So we're trying to find cracks in um, various components to make sure they're going to be safe and they're not going to um, kind of break or kind of cause fatalities. So there's a range of techniques. The primary one I've been looking at is using ultrasound. So you're sending ultrasonic um, acoustic waves into the component, which will reflect off um, the kind of size of the component and it will reflect off defects. So you can kind of pick up these um, reflections and you can kind of get a visual um, view of what's inside your component and how structurally safe it is. It's good because it's um, cheaper and faster than going and doing lots of experiments. Um, you can kind of create simulations of various components, you can run different types of inspections, so you can kind of quickly and efficiently sort of analyse your inspection, try and optimise it without having to go and build or manufacture lots of test pieces. And it's also very visual, because um, you're simulating what's happening inside the component, you can actually see it, whereas an experiment, all you're kind of seeing is the outside and the reflection coming back, which you don't always know where they're coming from, whereas in simulation you can actually see what's happening inside. Composite is actually very tricky to both inspect with ultrasound but also to simulate and that's because of their anisotropic material properties and also because they're very complex in their geometry. They're made up of very thin ply layers um, with sort of even thinner resin layers in between them and this causes reflection of the wave as it travels through and if you start kind of changing the geometry of the component, if you look at tapers where you drop off plies and go from kind of thicker to thinner this makes it even more complicated because you've got a lot more going on inside and you've even got sort of woven um, fabrics where you have interwoven um, fibres which again causes kind of reflections and scattering and kind of refracts the beam as it goes through. So these are all very difficult to inspect but also pose challenges to simulate because you've got very thin layers so you need to have a very small box size to get the um, geometry representation which adds computation of uh, overheads and also the material properties, there's a lot going on in these models. Okay, so let me just show you a quick example of why these are difficult to inspect but also to simulate. So here we have a very simple model that's just a kind of carbon fibre laminate so we can see the different um, ply layers and in between we've got interply resin layers. So if I run the model, what we are doing is applying a pressure load to the top and on the left here we can see the acoustic pressure of the wave as it travels down and you can see some reflections happening. On the right we're plotting the um, received signal that you'd have if you had a transducer on the top. So what you can see is the initial pulse going in and then lots of little reflections which is these reflections from these ply layers. And you can see as the wave comes back we'll see the back wall signal um, come back to the transducer. So this simple example is uh, very much an ideal case. We've built it with perfectly flat, perfectly uniform um, ply layers but this allows us to see the interaction of the wave with these material interfaces and you see what happens inside the component. Now we'll see in the manufacturing process it's not going to be perfect and you're never going to build a composite that's perfectly uniform and perfectly flat and um, there's going to be slight variation in the ply layers and this is something that we can include in our on scale model um, so the next example I'll show you will show you how we can do that. So in this example I've taken our very simple flat laminate and added some ply waviness that you might see in a real component. And what this means is that the ply layers are no longer uniform and you have these waviness effects and as you can see we have regions of thicker um, resin layers due to this. And if we run the simulation we can see and we can visualise what effect this has on the wave as it propagates through. We can see that the beam becomes refracted and kind of wants to travel along these um, ply layers and this is primarily due to the angle, it's, um, angle of incidence that's occurring at these material interfaces and also the material properties of the ply layers. And on the right if we look at the signal that we'd receive we can see that we no longer have the perfect uh, uniform response 
and there's kind of a bit of a distortion and when the back wall comes back we lose some of the amplitude due to the scattering and the refraction that's happening in the component. So this was a very simple example but it actually shows quite a lot of one scale's capabilities that we can model these highly complex components, we can recreate the geometry, um, account for all the anisotropic material properties and really get a visual representation of what's happening. We can build even more complex components and really get a better understanding of what's going on in the inspections and kind of improve and optimise our inspection techniques for these challenging components. Thank you very much, Jeff. It's no problem.